2015, 2 o'clock Austin time. We're going to uh, give you all an update on the KW websites and the early adopters. Uh, a lot of you have tons of questions and you probably have agents come in asking you what's going on as well. We're going to give you all the answers here in just a little bit. We've got some ES interface updates uh, to tell you about, some uh, nice uh, and um, pleasant uh, looking changes. We have some updates on the HomeKeeper and your KW mobile app. We have some special guests, so we're going to be able to answer all of the questions that you may have regarding uh, the HomeKeeper app and your KW mobile app. And then, as always, we'll cover next week's schedule. All right, let's get started uh, with our update on the KW websites and early adopters. Okay, hey everybody, happy Friday. So I know a lot of you have questions about, uh, you know, I signed up to be an early adopter, I haven't gotten an email yet. Don't worry, they have not gone out yet. Our team is still finalizing that list, running a little bit late on that, so... Uh, you still might be in the group and just not know it yet. We are anticipating that they still will go out by the end of the month, so that gives us another five or so days. So just keep your eyes out, and as soon as we know something, uh, we will let you know. Uh, one thing, though, that's been uh, done is that we recorded the webinar. We did a webinar earlier this week for leadership so that they would be in the loop on what's going on with the websites. That way they can answer agent questions as far as what the websites will offer, uh, questions about the early adopter program, and uh, all that good stuff so they could talk to recruits as well. So the webinar has been recorded. If you want to see it or point your leadership to it, if they missed it, go to KW Connect and click the leadership link at the top of the screen. That's going to bring up a list of all leadership videos. You'll go to the Technology for Leadership section and click the KW Value Propositions link. This video is considered a value proposition because it talks about the benefits of the KW websites. Again, it's at a level uh, that would be appropriate for a recruiting presentation. And then you'll see it there under new agent websites. If you want a written record of the webinar, the best way to get that is to look at last week's ambassador webinar slides. We gave you a preview of that leadership webinar last Friday. So uh, if you're not sure where to find slides from our webinars, um, all slides from all ambassador webinars so far can be found by going into the KW Technology community. And once you're in there, you're going to go to Tools, Documents, and then you'll have a list of documents and folders, and it's at the very bottom. You'll see a link to Ambassador Webinar Slides. So once you go there, let me erase my highlighter. That's going to have you log into Google Drive. Again, you'll have to use your kw.com credentials to log in uh, because we host our slides in a Google Drive folder. All of the webinar slides are organized by date, so you're going to go to the 2015 folder, and that's going to bring up, unfortunately, and if anyone knows the answers to why this is, uh, you can't search when you're viewing a folder that's been shared with you. So you'll have to scroll down to the bottom of all of the slides that are there, and each one is named with the date. And so at the very bottom, you'll see last week's slides from September 18th. And the first, the, the majority of last week's webinar was dedicated to uh, what you need to know about KW websites. So, everything you need is in that slide deck. And again, as soon as we know more about the early adopter group one going live, we will let you know, and you'll also be getting an email either way if you signed up. 
The next topic, and, and yes, Joe, you can do control F if what you need is on the screen that you're searching for. So yes, that will work, but it won't search the contents of the slides. But yeah, thank you for that tip. So next, uh, you might have noticed if you've logged into eEdge this week, specifically Wednesday or later, that it looks a lot different. And that's because Market Leader, um, so this is also across all their CRM products, Pro and Business Suite, they all have a new look. No functionality has changed at all. It just looks different. It looks more like the Marketing Design Center now. Uh, it's just m more minimal in the difference in colors. Icons have been cleaned up, so it's just really, they did research and set a goal of making it easier to navigate, easier to use, and so that's all that's happened. So don't panic, don't think that your functionality has changed in any way, it's all the same. One thing that is different is, uh, I'm gonna bring up a live version of eEdge for you here. So just bear with me for one moment. Okay, so let's go into eEdge with Annie Agent's account. And we're standing by. So just a couple of things have gotten easier. And one is when you go to the admin screen, go to my account. Notice at the top of the screen is the edit button. So it used to be that you had to scroll down oops, further on this page to get to that edit button. So it's still there, but now you can also get it at the top of the screen. So that, that is one functionality enhancement that makes it easier to use. Um, but aside from that, really everything is the same. It just has a different look and feel to it. So we hope that you enjoy the changes. Okay, so let's go back to our slides. Here we are. Okay, so next we're gonna spend the rest of the webinar, except for the very end, talking about HomeKeeper and its integration into our mobile search apps. So you probably got an email from HomeKeeper earlier this week, and um, if you're not familiar with it, it's, well, one thing you should know, if you were at Megacamp or at the blog, you might have heard what the top five real estate technology trends are, and one of them is to have a tool that provides post-transaction services. That's what clients really want. And so in line with that trend, we've recently partnered with HomeKeeper, and they provide a service that recommends vendors and, um, has uh, reminders, a calendar for home owners so that they can stay on top of all of the maintenance of everything in their home. And what's great about this, it's an app uh, that gives them this maintenance calendar and it's also agent branded. So this really helps you and all of our agents remain a valuable resource to their clients long after the transaction has closed. So what it really does is helps agents transition from being seen as a one-time business relationship to a long-term trusted resource for local information. So next Wednesday, September 30th, is when the HomeKeeper app button is going to be live in all agents' mobile apps. So Kevin is going to walk you through how to get ready for that. All right, thank you, Brenda. And first of all, I want to introduce um, the, uh, Rob Morelli, who is the CEO and co-founder of HomeKeeper. He's on the call, and if you have a moment, say hello, Rob. Hey, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to be on this call and answer any questions that you might have. We look forward to working with you. Yeah, we're so excited to have you on the call, Rob. Thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedule to join us. And, of course, we have uh, Tara Wilkerson with our Vendor Networks team. Uh, say hello, Tara. All right, I'm sure we have Tara on the line there somewhere, but we just wanted to let you all know that we have resources available to you if you have any questions. So about that, Tara is here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we muted. Right. We're muted. 
No worries, no worries. All right, so uh, let's let's look at what we need to do to get ready right now. There's four things that we need to do to get ready. Well, three things we need to do to get ready, and then the fourth is after we have completed the first three tasks. So the first is we're going to claim and create our free profile. We're going to show you exactly where and how you can do that. Then next is uploading favorite local home service professionals. It's either uploading or, or adding them is really what we can say. And then we're going to make sure your clients and your recommended vendors, it's really important that your vendors also have this app, uh, have your, uh, I should say, have your mobile app already downloaded so they can share it. And then we want to share HomeKeeper. So let's go through the process of what that looks like. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to claim and create our free profile through HomeKeeper. So one of the first things uh, that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to complete the, uh, the first part of the profile where we um, put in our first name, our last name. Now you'll notice the third line here, if you can see on the screen, it says uh, KW Mobile App Text Code. And that's really important that um, you all uh, you all put that code in there because it's what really connects the uh, app, uh, the HomeKeeper app, or the HomeKeeper process um, connection, I should say, uh, to your app. So please uh, put in your mobile text code. And in a moment, I'll have uh, Brenda give me access to the uh, presentation, and then I'll show you exactly how we get that um, how we get that uh, app. Now, I did want to mention, the, um, to get to this page, you need to go to www.homekeeper.com, okay, www.homekeeper.com. Then you'll click on um, Start Building uh, Your uh, Profile to get started, okay? That's the first thing that, that you all are going to do. All right, once you're on HomeKeeper, you'll get to this page. You'll start to uh, create your own um, your own information, put in your password, uh, t uh, click on the uh, agreements, of course, and then move on. So let's go to the next slide. After you click on Start Building Your Profile, the uh, next page will automatically show up. All right, here's the next page. Now we're going to customize it. We're going to put in um, our information, uh, first name, last name, uh, make sure all of that is correct, and then underneath you'll see the company info. Now the company info is what's going to connect your brokerage to you. So put in your company name, uh, your your website, uh, your office phone, um, your uh, contact information, the association that is your board's association. And there's specific reason for that. We'll show you here in just a moment. Natalie, put in your market center so that we can connect you with the market center and some of the resources that your market center has available. Um, your office zip code and then very important, your real estate license number, because sometimes it is required to be displayed. Um, so we want to make sure that is available in case that happens, all right? Now, as we're going through the process, you'll see um, on the right-hand side what is being completed, all right? Now, after we click Save and Continue, we'll come to the next uh, screen. When we click Save and Continue, that'll take us to the opportunity to uh, add our photo. This is a really great process. I was really quite impressed with how well this worked out. Um, you can upload your photo directly from your computer's hard drive, or you can search the web. Now, what's very interesting is when I was doing this process, and I did uh, search the web, uh, it automatically was started looking for any agent. I did a search for any agent, and sure enough, I was able to find uh, Miss Any Agent, our, our uh, demo agent that has been doing a very good job for us uh, since we started the um, technology team. So Any Agent came up by me simply doing a search uh, for her. So you may not even need uh, quick uh, need the URL if you can find a photo. It's very cool. All right. Let's go on to the next slide. After we um, add our photo, it will automatically take us to uh, the next step, which is um, adding your company logo. Your company logo, since it, it's a Keller Williams specific uh, account, you're going to see that uh, the Keller Williams uh, logo will automatically show up. So you get a default logo, but you can add uh, your own logo if you choose. So you'll notice again off to the right hand side, any agent's photo now shows up along with the logo. I love that because it's giving you 
your progress. It's telling you exactly what it looks like as you are moving along. Okay? I'm going to save and continue, and that will then take me to my next step, which is adding vendors. Now, there's a couple of ways you can add vendors. At the very top of the screen, and screenshots are a little difficult to see. I apologize about that. At the very top of the screen, it says that you can actually uh, upload your own vendors. So you can upload your own vendors in a CSV file and upload them into um, into HomeKeeper, which means you can export your contacts out of the Edge, and then we can then import uh, those contacts into HomeKeeper. At this time, there is no integration between your contacts and the HomeKeeper contacts. At this point, you could also add uh, additions. So, we're going to add our vendors. Now, you'll, you'll notice, it, and I beg your pardon, I did say add vendors here. This is actually when we add the contacts. And, um, we'll find out a little bit more about the, the import process. So I apologize. I believe that is on the next screen. What we can do on the Add Vendor screen is you can add any of the affiliates with your office. So remember, when we were setting this up, we saw the opportunity to um, put in our market center. Your market center leadership has been contacted by HomeKeeper directly. They have asked them to provide their list of approved vendors. If HomeKeeper has received this list of approved vendors, then this option will show. <clears throat> if your board has provided a list of their preferred vendors to HomeKeeper uh, in your, uh, for your office and, or for your MLS, I should say, for your board, um, then this uh, link will also show. So if they're available, they will show. All right, I had a question come in uh, that says, um, under association, I was given one of our associations, but not the one I belong to. They have several in the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia areas. So uh, let's uh, let's stop for a moment and let's see if we can get uh, that uh, that question answered. Rob, do you have an answer on that? Is there going to be a way for us to get multiple uh, associations uh, available? Uh, right now, each agent uh, we only allow each agent to assign themselves to one of the local associations. Now, where we use the local association information is in, in providing you or offering you the ability to download that association's vendor list. Um, so, and that's the only list that we use for now. Uh, so, uh, if there's more than one association's vendor list that you'd like downloaded to your profile, uh, you can send that request special to us at support at and we'll make sure to do that for you. We'll put that in our, in our things too. Um, but otherwise, it wouldn't affect anything else uh, for you. Okay, that's excellent. Now, what if an association is simply just not showing up? Um, that would be uh, that strange. Uh, I see that question. Um, we thought we had captured every association. Um, um, not to be confused with LS, because some people have requested uh, that their MLS was missing. Um, sure. We thought we had every association. If we don't, please uh, send it to me, Andy. Let me know which one is, and I'll make sure we get that up there for you. Right. And we'll give you all some support um, resources here after the call. And as always, Andy, you could simply email support at kdb.com. Our support team will be more than happy to get that to uh, the HomeKeeper team and get an answer for you immediately. Okay, great. Right, let's look at your dashboard. So as soon as you have finished the process, you'll take in your dashboard. By the way, this is also your home page. So when you click on Home, you'll see your dashboard. Now, in your dashboard, if you were to click on Update My Profile, you would see your profile there and, and your, uh, so your own contact information, your um, office contact information would be there you would uh, see your vendor. So you'd see a list of all the vendors. So if you were to click on My Vendors, it would show all of the vendors that you import from uh, your board and from your MLS as well as any others that you have added. So you can, here is where we would um, add additional vendors. So Brenda, let's go to the next screen. So we're going to say that we clicked on, um, on our vendor list. Here you'll see your vendor list. It's a big, long list of vendors since we have 136 that came from our, uh, uh, from our office directly. Now, if I was to click on any one of, uh, of these um, vendors within this list, and uh, we'll click on this list and it'll, this um, link, and it'll take us to the next slide. And here we can, we're just clicked on a simple vendor. Now we can um, add additional information about the vendor. We can also remove the vendor if we need to. So this is one of the places that we can remove vendors uh, directly. Now something that we noticed when we were doing our um, when we were doing our uh, 
uh, our testing and when I was setting it up is uh, on the mobile device on an Android you cannot left swipe to remove on an Apple device you can left swipe to remove so we you can add vendors uh, and remove vendors on a, on an Apple device you can add vendors but not remove them on a mobile so Rob I'm going to ask uh, well that's that's a priority <laughs> well no we, you you actually can uh, you can hear me right you you can yeah, delete can. on uh, Yep, you can delete on the uh, Android device. I believe Android is a is a slow swipe to the left. Slow swipe. Yeah, it's a, right. yeah, yeah. Androids are a little bit uh, different, I guess, in how okay. they, uh, that action takes place. But it should be a slow swipe to the left, which would uh, which would initiate a delete. Yep. Okay, very good. We're going to try that out. I'm going to promise not Great. to do it right now while we're on the call. But <laughs> all right. Let's move on. So uh, now we know we can add uh, add contacts, remove contacts, either through the web interface or through our mobile device. That's great. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so it's vital now that we have um, make sure our app is downloaded. Now, if you recall, there is an easy way to share the app with the share app button there that's on the first uh, uh, screenshot and then you'll notice that we have the opportunity to now share by Facebook, by Twitter, by text message and by email. We need to let our um, we need to let our clients know that we have this great new uh, app available and it's tied to this amazing new service. So again the app is, as we mentioned, we, we've talked about this, but I, I always like like to make sure that we we uh, repeat ourselves because the app is one of those messages that you can send to your entire database. So there's not a lot of times that we can just blast our entire database with the same message and not potentially uh, make someone feel left out or or wonder why we sent them that particular message. The app is. Is, is a message that you can send to everybody you know because even if they have your app, what you're asking them to do is share the app. So take advantage of this. Uh, as many opportunities as you have to, to share the app or promote the app, take those advantages. All right, so that, that's next. We're going to share our app. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to start sharing HomeKeeper. So, in your profile, you, you probably notice that you have a, a HomeKeeper URL. Everybody has their own unique HomeKeeper URL. And that HomeKeeper URL um, is, um, is a link that will take people to get started and create their own unique HomeKeeper account using, uh, using your, branded, um, your branded app. So you can take advantage of that. Um, and so this is one way of us sharing the app. And then the, the next slide will um, show some marketing pieces that you have available to you uh, in your app. If you're on your home page, you'll look and you'll see that there are two pieces of marketing material. At this time, you can uh, click on the printer, download this page. Once the printer download option comes up, you will need to change to save to a PDF or print um, this piece. By next week, we uh, do understand that the um, option to download will just be a click of a button. So take advantage of these um, marketing opportunities. And then, of course, we have the ability for you to um, market using your eEdge uh, marketing pieces, you can start to create your own custom campaigns, your own uh, custom uh, uh, messages coming directly um, out of eEdge. Let's go to the next slide there, Brenda. And uh, you can start your campaign, start telling people about the HomeKeeper app and what's, what's available. So be sure you are taking advantage of the uh, marketing suite out of KW. All right, a couple questions have come in, and Rob, hopefully you're available to um, answer this. Um, it, and so we're being, the, the question's being asked, since we're asking them to share the HomeKeeper app using that HomeKeeper URL, is it redundant mm -hmm. that it's time to share both the HomeKeeper 
and the KW app, or are they going to both be integrated? Uh, what happens when somebody creates a, a, a profile um, using the, the, the URL and then the integration happens? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, sure. So um, to start with, there are lots of ways for you to invite your clients to HomeKeeper or to start using your HomeKeeper or be able to view your HomeKeeper directory. Uh, the simplest is just to go through the KW app, right, to simply direct your clients to download the KW app and on September 30th uh, to be able to press the HomeKeeper button and then we'll walk them through uh, the sign-up process from there. So uh, it'll be pretty seamless. Uh, it'll be a couple of steps and, uh, and we'll take them right through uh, to your HomeKey profile. Now, not everyone uh, wants to download two apps when I want to use two services. So there are other ways to invite your clients to HomeKeeper, one of which being that URL that we showed earlier. You can also send out invitations directly to your clients from the HomeKeeper system. Um, but I would say that the simplest way to do this is since that most of your clients or many of your clients will already have the KW apps on their phone um, just to kind of press the HomeKeeper button and we'll take them through that way. There will be no difference to your clients whether they sign up through uh, the HomeKeeper app or through the Kellogg's app or if they click on that URL. So uh, there'll be no problems at all there. We're going to merge all those. Uh, there were some earlier questions about uh, what if you signed up to HomeKeeper uh, before the partnership with Kellogg Williams. Uh, all, all of those accounts, all those previous Kellogg Williams accounts should have been merged through to and to the new Kellogg Williams program. Um, if you didn't have Kellogg Williams anywhere in your profile and we weren't able to locate you as being, could uh, identify you as being Kellogg Williams, then we might not have done that. Um, but if we caught 99% of the cases, um, if we have reach out, let me know, and I'll be sure to take care of that for you. All the merging should have happened already. Excellent. All right. There are also some questions of the uh, the marketing uh, material. Uh, that's something that we launched uh, a few days ago. Uh, we had some agents ask us to post marketing material plus uh, Kellogg's agents, um, and so we posted uh, two up there for now. Uh, we're going to be posting a lot more in the coming you know, weeks and months. Um, you know, we'll have some KW specific ones up there as well with the KW colors. Um, um, so the first two that we got up there was just to see if uh, the response was going to be positive and it's been overwhelmingly positive, which is pretty exciting. Um, and, and so we'll be putting more on there. So yes, we'll have uh, the ability to PDF create uh, coming very shortly. And we might even have the ability to uh, download this as a JPEG, as an image that you'll be able to post to social media as a way to attract people to your HomeKeeper profile. Um, so all that's coming in very short order. We did notice when we're in the HomeKeeper app, it says upgrade my plan. And when you go to upgrade a plan, uh, it looks like the Keller Williams uh, group has the largest plan that's available. Um, tell us a little bit about that plan. That's right. So right now everyone starts off with a 1,000 client plan. Now, you have actually have an inch number of clients. You can invite as many clients as you like. We limit it to 1,000 to start. Uh, for uh, spam purposes, right? If if there are a thousand emails going out that all look the same, go to a thousand different clients or more than a thousand different clients, then the email servers pick up on that and could start trapping some of those emails and they won't make it through to your clients' inboxes. Um, as you approach a thousand, we'll automatically bump up your client uh, count so you can invite another thousand or another thousand beyond that. Uh, but awesome. we don't want to allow anyone to send. We don't want to allow anyone to send ten thousand at the same time because none of them will get through. Uh, you, you seem to think that our real estate agents would do that. That's that's a thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. Very yeah. good. Um, any other questions in there that you see or are calling out to you? We're just about out of time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just real quick. So someone asked about the marketing piece is not working in Chrome. If you change the print, so it should go directly to the print screen. And when you're in the print screen, you can change the option to say save to PDF. Save to PDF. And that should, uh, that should help right there. That should do it for you. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to give these uh, all of the questions to Rob. So ask additional questions that you have right now. Get them in. Uh, we're going to send those questions to them. We'll get the answers for you. We'll provide those in our uh, ambassador update. All right. And uh, make sure you get answers to those questions. All right. Thank you very much, Rob. Thank you very much, Tara. That's completely awesome. I am so excited about this. Uh, partnership um, both as an agent and as a trainer. We're very excited as well. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Bray, why don't you take us on to next week's schedule? Okay. And um, yeah, thank you, Rob. For That was great to have all the questions answered. So yeah, real quick, next week's schedule, uh, Monday's Systems for Success is going to be focused on manually adding a contact and we'll go through all of the fields in the contact summary 
and uh, what you can do from that screen. And then Wednesday, as usual, is the KW video training, and then we'll be back on Friday with our Technology Ambassador webinar. Um, just a heads up about next week's webinar, we are going to be talking a little bit about the Keller Williams Commercial Division and technology resources and training available to those agents while it's a smaller audience. Uh, we want to make sure that you as ambassadors at least know where to direct them for their resources. They have uh, an intranet right now that's restricted to only commercial members, so we want to make sure that we expand the presence of their technology resources to um, the general KW audience so that you can help get them what they need. So we're just going to get you in loop on how to help out commercial agents. And we'll have a guest speaker, Sam Hasty, uh, who does all of our technology training for commercial agents. So he'll be on the call. So we wanted to wrap up. Um, we're happy that it's fall, even though it's, what, 94 degrees here today. It is still technically fall. And um, we wanted to ask a, a trivia question, and that is, when was the first Google Doodle launched? And this is the Google Doodle that uh, you might have seen if you look at Google on Wednesday, September 23rd, the first day of fall or the September equinox. So who knows when the first Doodle? Let's see. When is it the first Doodle that was created or the first Doodle that was actually launched? Let's answer both. <laughs> All right. Like, like. Maybe the, get when was the first Doodle created? Let's start with that one. I haven't uh, seen Michael the James answer. Came in with a good. <laughs> no, Google, no Googling allowed. No Googling. Uh, yeah, like Michael came in in April 2008. Okay, Joel is right. 2000 was the was first actual uh, uh, Google that was uh, was um, shown to the public. Yep, that was for Bastille Day. Yeah, um, right. And then the before the company was even incorporated, the concept uh, was. Um, founded or created in 1998 for the Burning Man because the founders went to the Burning Man Festival so they created uh, a, a doodle that let everybody know they were out of the office at festival so very interesting cool. and look how far it's come um, yeah Google doodles are now created by artists um, illustrators this particular one was created by an illustrator named Kristen Lepore so, and they're called, cool. they're called doodlers, right? Doodlers. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that's what their business card says. All right, awesome. Hey, everyone, we want to thank you all for being a part of today's uh, presentation. And as always, uh, we want to be sure that you all are staying on the edge of real estate technology by using KW Technology. Hope you have a super Friday. Um, please let us know if there's anything we can do for you. We'll leave the questions box open for just a little bit, and then uh, we will uh, see you all next week. Thanks for being here. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend.